Hello everyone, um, I shall be showing you how to write bubble saw in Java uh, using test driven development. This is the third time I've done this video in the last hour because I've been having trouble with my screen recorder. Uh, it may be a little bit rushed but I'll try my very best. Hopefully, because I've done it so many times it will be a lot more polished than the first draft. So first we're going to declare, well we're going to start a new Java project called bubble saw. And we're going to have a new Java source folder where we're going to keep our test ca uh, test cases. It's important to separate your uh, production code to your test code, as uh, semantically they're very different things. Now we're going to have our test case as we start from tests before writing any code at all. Uh, We'll, call, we'll, we'll, we'll name the test class after the class it's testing. So we're going to uh, we're going to test bubble sort. So our name will be bubble sort tests. Here we get the standard uh, JUnit boilerplate code. We'll just run it to make sure that the Eclipse is set up correctly. It is. So we can go ahead and write our first test, which is to check that a sorted list is uh, unmodified so when doing things in a test driven development way we start from our assertion and work our way back to um, the actual code that will pass those tests There we go, we've got our assertion, and if we run our test, it won't run because it won't compile, as we haven't declared bubble sort. Go ahead and do that, and put it in the source folder. Uh, there we go, we've got the outline there, and if we create the static method, uh, we, we've got that there, and it's going to fail for the right reasons now. Uh, by failing for the right reasons, I mean we uh, the, the code is doing what we'd expect so rather than not compiling um, it's going to return null so we can actually change that to fix it so the code says it was null so um, well, the uh, test result says it was null so we can go ahead and write the simplest thing to pass this test case don't don't remove the comments or rename the variables yet we don't have the safety net of a passing test suite to allow refactorings. If you go ahead and do refactorings now, um, or well, not so much now, but at a later stage where you've got a lot of code and you think you're just doing something simple, you may accidentally delete something quite important, which is what's important to uh, only use refactor uh, 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 only refactor after you've got a passing uh, a passing test suite. So if we go ahead and return. Uh, the, 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 the array we're passing in, it should we should get passing tests, which we do. So um, we can now go ahead and write our second test as we've done our refactoring. So um, sort and sorted uh, list of length two. Uh, so set array equals our our expected array and bubble sort our unsorted array. So because we're just returning the array, uh, this is not going to pass our tests. So if we just run them, uh, the zeroth element, or oh, the yeah, the zeroth element was one instead of zero as we're just returning our the array we pass in. So now oh I forgot to refactor this. We'll do that in a minute. Um, so if we check the first element of the array, um, we'll compare it to the second element. If it's larger then we'll swap it. There we go, that should pass our tests now, and we can refactor the horrendous variable name and 
get rid of this horrible comment. So, save it, run our tests again. So for each refactoring, however small, rerun your test cases. Um, we'll rename this to Array. Save the code, run the tests. They still pass, that's good. So we've covered our refactoring in our source code, and now we need to cover our refactoring in the test code. It's really important to refactor your test code so that you don't end up having a lot of duplication. A lot of people complain that test-driven development, well, testing your code means that you're very invested in your design. However, if you modularize your test code appropriately, then this doesn't tend to be the case. Uh, so, if you had 100 test cases where you're calling bub bubble sort dot sort, then yes, that'd be very difficult to change. However, we're going to extract this into its own method early on, so that's never a problem. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, check bubble sorted array returns x. Expected. Unfortunately, this is the best name I could come up with when I was writing this. So we save our code, run our tests, and if they pass, then we can continue our refactoring. Um, so we introduce a parameter here, which will be the uh, expected array. Go ahead, save that, run the tests, make sure it works, and then, oh, and then this as well. This will be our, our uh, input array. Save the code, run the tests, and everything passes. So here we, we we still haven't fixed the duplication yet, as we've got this method only being called in this test. So we need to go ahead and replace this test here. So our expected array is 0, 1, and the array we're passing in is exactly the same, 0, 1. Now, it might be appropriate to assign this to a variable. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it as it is for the moment. That's, that's something for you to decide. Run our test, they both pass, so we can go ahead. With finished our refactoring so we can go ahead and write our next test case which is sorting uh, sort a sort partially unsorted array of length 3 I'm going to use our new method again and we're going to expect to get this array and we're going to pass in this partially unsorted array here so run the tests, they should fail because we're just comparing the first and second element, not all of them, and there we go, it's failing for the right reason so we can go ahead and fix the code. So we're going to have to iterate over the whole range of the array. So we're going to compare the i minus one th element with the i th element and swap them if the i minus one th element is oop, uh, smaller, uh, larger. Sorry, <laughs> it's hard to explain in code at the same time. Run our tests; they will pass check whether we can do any refactoring. We haven't got any duplicated test code here and our, our uh, bubble sort code isn't great. We should probably re-indent it, save it, run our tests. There you go, they're still running. Um, okay, I'm, I'm fairly happy with, with that implementation and finally we can go ahead and implement the last test which would be sort uh, unsorted array of length 3 
So this test case fails because we're only iterating over the list once. Uh, in this case what will happen is we'll, we will compare 2 with 1. I'll just run the tests now. Yeah, so they fail. So what we do, we compare 2 with 1 and swap them so we get 1, 2, 0. And then we compare 2 with 0 to get swapped so we end up with array 1, 0, 2. Which obviously isn't the correct answer. We need to iterate over the list repeatedly until we've stopped swapping elements which is what I'm going to do now. So if we have a boolean swapped that we initialize to true and then um, run the code only whilst swapped um, I actually don't need that bracket do we? So for each iteration over in the, in the for loop I'm going to set swap to false but if we do swap an element, then we're going to say swap is equal to true. This isn't going to work as I haven't put curly braces in to set all of this as one block of code. I'll uh, reinvent it now. Uh, and if we go ahead, run our test cases, and we see that they all pass. And there we have a. Oh, no, we'll check for refactoring first doesn't appear to be any duplication in our test code uh, we're using check bubble sorted array returns expected and in our source code everything's looking fairly reasonable I think yeah mm, yeah so that's 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 bubble sort in using test driven development I encourage you to sit down and before coding these things just go through a few examples and think about how you could implement the simplest behavior uh, the simplest, uh, <laughs> what the simplest implementation would be to pass each set of tests I, th I find it quite a good way of understanding how algorithms work and I think that's where the value in this method lies um, and of course you get your your tests for free which is nice um